All right, everybody, welcome to uh, the first of uh, a couple of Nearpoint labs where we teach you about accommodation, Fourier's invergences, and how to measure those appropriately. Uh, the first ones that we're going to do today are going to be accommodative measures. We're going to do the negative relative accommodation, positive relative accommodation, fused cross cylinder, and monocular cross cylinder. For this particular lab, you'll need your diamond card uh, that on the back side of it has the cross cylinder grid. Um, once you get in the lab, you'll go ahead and place it or position it onto your uh, four opter. Okay. There we go. And you'll drop your reading rod down. Uh, as you do this, you're going to have your patient's BSBBA already entered into the four opter. So Phoebe's BSBBA is already in the four opter. You're going to need to set your PD at near. So you'll go ahead and rotate each side in. Uh, Phoebe will be looking through the instrument, of course. And then you'll want the overhead light, when we do our NRA P and PRA, we want the overhead light to be on the card. Um, when you put the light on the card, you want to make sure you're not casting a shadow. Um, as here, you can see the light has ha got a shadow cast on the card because of the reading rod. So you need to make sure that the, there's no shadow on the card and that the patient can actually see the letters on that card. Um, both eyes are open when we're doing our uh, negative relative accommodation and positive relative accommodation. There are variances, and you will do those in the lab, where you do a, a monocular PRA and a binocular PRA. Um, that allows you to assess the individual accommodative skill of an eye um, relative to or in comparison to the um, vergence system. But for this example, I'm only going to be showing you the binocular NRA PRA uh, tests. So we have our patient set up, our room lights are normal, the reading light is on, we verified that indeed the card is at 40 centimeters, and our patient is ready to go. Now all of our near point tests we do, we want to go from a relaxation test or a relaxing test to a stimulating test. So as we do this, you'll notice that we do the plus lens plus lenses first, which is going to be our NRA, and then we'll do our positive relative accommodation, or PRA, or minus lenses second, because we don't want to trigger accommodation before we've relaxed it. So as we have our patient looking at our card, I want you to tell me, Phoebe, when those letters get so blurry you can't read any of them at all, and we're going to begin by adding plus. Again, we are doing the negative relative accommodation, taking super being super careful to change them both at the same rate and at the same time. Here. Good. I'm going to pause. Can you make any of them out now, Phoebe? Yeah. Okay. Tell me when you can't make them out anymore. Here. Okay, I'm going to pause again. Can you make any out there? No. Okay. Now I'm going to go two past. So right here we have a blur out of 375. So you'll remember whatever is in the lens well on the right eye. So we have a plus 375 blur out. I'm going to go past by two. Now tell me when you could read a couple of them again, Phoebe. Here. Okay. So here we have a 350 recovery. So a plus 375 or a plus 350, that would be a lens in place or a gross finding. If you did the net value, that's going to simply be the difference between where we started and where we ended. Now Phoebe, when we began today, was plus 75 on the right eye. So her net value on the blur out was a plus 3 because we started at plus 75. She went up to 375. So the net is the difference. So she has a plus 3 blur out with a plus 275 recovery. The recording of that is plus 3 over plus 2.75 and then you would put a net after that. Okay, That's the blur out and recovery on an NRA. Now to do PRA, we'll reset Phoebe back. We're going to reset her back to her BSBVA and now we're going to repeat the exact same sequence but we're going to add minus lenses instead. On this one it won't be unusual to go more than three diopters. Tell me when those letters are so blurry, Phoebe, you couldn't read any of them at all. Is 
Still make them out? Uh, yeah. Okay. So here we've gone three and a half diopters, uh, four diopters, excuse me, beyond where we started. Um, for the purposes of lab, if we go more than three diopters net, so if you go more than three diopters net on the positive relative accommodation, you can simply record greater than minus 350 net, and that tells us that that patient basically is greater than three diopters um, on positive relative accommodation. That's what Phoebe did here. She's actually at four diopters right now, um, so we would record greater than, the, greater than four on her. Okay. Um, now we're going to go ahead and roll into our fused cross cylinder. So I'm going to reset Phoebe here uh, to her BSBVA. Okay. Now on this one, it's a little bit different. The setup we're going to change. Um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to do our blur out. Okay, our blur out and recovery on the NRA side of the house. So we would go ahead and blur her out. Tell me when they're too blurry, Phoebe, and you couldn't read any of them at all. Here. Can you make any out there? Uh, no. I'm going to go two pass. Tell me when you could read a couple again. Here. Okay. Here's where we change our setup. So we're going to add in our, few, our cross cylinder lenses, the plus minus 50 on each eye. Okay, and we're going to change the light source. So we're going to angle the light up and towards the back wall, and we're going to change the card. So we're going to rotate the cross cylinder card around to face the patient. Okay, we're going to dim the overhead lights. So the only light we really have is this light source pointed up at the ceiling and at the back wall plus minus 50 lenses in place, the cross cylinder lenses in place, and we have the cross cylinder card in front of our patient. We're going to ask our patient now, as she's looking at those lines, which set of lines are darker and more distinct, the vertical or horizontal? The vertical. Good. And then I'm going to add a click of minus. How about here, vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Good. Vertical. 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 Horizontal. Great. Okay. So our fused cross cylinder finding is going to be the net is plus one and a quarter because again we started Phoebe at plus 75. We're at plus two right now so the net is the difference. So Phoebe's net on the fused cross cylinder is a plus 1.25. Normally we would expect the net to be plus a half uh, which indicates that she has a slight lag of accommodation. Phoebe's is a little bit more than that which is, is fine. It's better to have a lag than a lead. Now, if we were to do this same procedure, but we were to do it monocularly, it's the same setup, so 20-40 blur, except now we have one eye, okay, so just one eye has the plus minus 50, the other eye is occluded. We put her back, put her back at her, uh, at her recovery from the NRA, and as you're looking at those lines, Phoebe, which is more darker and more distinct, the vertical or horizontal? Vertical. 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 vertical horizontal. Great. And then you would do the same thing on the other eye. Again, making sure that it's the plus minus 50 and that it's not open. Same thing as before, which is darker and more distinct? Vertical. 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 Horizontal. Great. Okay. You can relax. So on that, so Phoebe's, whoop. so on Phoebe's monocular cross cylinder, her net value for the right eye is going to be plus 75, <clears throat> and her net value on the left eye is going to be plus uh, a quarter, excuse me. Um, so on the monocular cross cylinder, you will need to record that for each individual eye. <clears throat> On the fused cross cylinder, you would re simply record what's in the right lens well. On the NRA, on the PRA, binocular NRA, PRA, you'll record what's in the right lens well as well. All of those values should be recorded as nets, so get into the habit of doing the calculation to come up with your net values. That's your combinative test for this week. Our next uh, lab will focus on Fourier's and Vergences.